evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I have the, the dubious honour of being the first normal speaker, and uh, following on from Dr. Farina, I hope your expectations aren't too high. Uh, I am also I'm not an expert, uh, but I have uh, a lot of experience and so longevity with working with hard facing service engineering and so on. Uh, I don't want to read all these slides here, or we'll probably end up reading, this, reading some of them. But uh, hopefully I'll be able to talk to the slides and you read them whilst I'm talking, if that's okay. Uh, this, this talk is going to be about the impact of raising corrosion resistance microcomposite and so on, as Paul has mentioned. Uh, this is a part of this presentation that I did actually come on and present two years ago here in Bunbury. We were at the um, Mercury, yes, and uh, time was running short there, so I wasn't able to go through everything. There's been some further developments on these products since that day, and I just wanted to come back and revisit, I suppose, the, the concept where it came from, a bit of a discussion on how, how we designed it, um, where we were targeted towards, and how it's been being implemented at the moment. So just as an overview, uh, this is Austin Technologies, we're a surface engineering company, which you can read that we've been uh, involved in mining mineral processing and power generation for many, many years. And we look at uh, surface technologies, and that might be hard facing with uh, PTA, as Paul has mentioned before. It might be uh, open art wires. We don't really work on a lot of submerged uh, wires or submerged wires. Um, we do some metal spraying, which uh, we're working with, but uh, try and look at whatever technology is available to suit a particular application. Okay, we, we are a leaders in the important field, I suppose. We've been around since 1993, so we've seen a lot of development in the mining and mineral processing. Uh, one of our biggest claims to fame was when Paul Howard was with us, and we're working with Argonne Diamond Mines, and we were applying well, very, very thick layers, up to 180 millimeter thick layers of chromium carbide on 9.4 segmented high pressure rolls crushes for Argonne, and we didn't have a contract there for seven years. So we've been around for quite a long time, and uh, we've done some very interesting projects. Uh, the new spot X hard facing products uh, were really uh, developed to try and combine, uh, try and uh, combat the problem we have with impact combined with abrasion resistance. So we sort of partnered with a company in a way to develop this. And this company, we would like to say that we were instrumental in the development of this, but the wires and powders themselves are developed by a company with a whole bunch of pointy heads. A company by the name of Scoperta, is a people, some people here may have heard of that company before, and they use the computational metallurgical techniques. They've got a big computer, deep thought, or whatever they call it, and uh, they just pile in a whole bunch of different elements at the time, and they come up with uh, compositions of wires that then go out to people like us from technologies. And we try and develop a method to deposit these deposit these wires so they become in a useful form. So the, the whole concept was we wanted to find something that was perhaps a little bit better than our standard spot 60. The spot 60 was really the benchmark for abrasion resistant uh, products or wear plates, wear deposits here and in the world, I suppose. And the spot 60 is a 60% tons of carbide and nickel silicon core on the matrix. Uh, and that is extremely abrasion resistant. It is what other abrasion resistant products are compared to, or with, depending on how you go. Uh, so that's just a quick picture of what our spot 60 wear plate actually looks like. It looks like a piece of color wear plate, I suppose, but it does contain 60% tons of carbide and 40% nickel silicon core on uh, but wear impact is more of an issue than new spot X hard facing deposits to provide protection at a more economical cost. In reality, the cost is not greatly reduced. It, they're probably, I don't know, maybe 60-65% of the cost of the spot 60. And although they're not as abrasion resistant, they are hellishly more impact resistant. So with an almost unlimited number of possible metallurgical combinations, it was clear that high-tech assistance would be a major benefit and be partnered with. Uh, Scoberta uh, to develop and produce what is required for the industry. What I noticed a couple of years ago is that we have a lot of professors and doctors and really, really smart scientists. And you have a lot of people like myself and like you guys who are in industry. But if the industry people don't let the scientists know what 
needs to be developed. And the scientists don't let the industry people know what can be developed. There's a bit of a gulf in between. And so we're sort of trying to put pointy heads together with blue collar workers, I suppose, to try and work out, okay, I want this, yes, I can make that, and get together. And this was the result, I suppose, when we started working with Scoperto. We received products from them, we developed methods to deposit them, we put them into trials, and so on. We got results in those trials, we fed that back to Scoperto, Scoperto made some changes and come back. And this has been going on now for three or four years. Uh, the products that we have <coughs> now, uh, the spot X products we have now, are extremely difficult to deposit, but the performance is unbelievable. So when we look at uh, what is a, a microcomposite alloy, well, a microcomposite alloy is multi-phase solid materials with one or the phases has one, two, or three dimensions of less than 100 micrometers. I'm sure you guys all know this. So we're getting the benefits of that. So behind the, the idea behind microcomposite is to use building blocks with dimensions in the micrometer range, micrometer range, to design and create new materials with unprecedented flexibility and improvement in their physical properties. It felt important to read that one. Okay, so the mechanical properties of the microcomposite will differ markedly from that of the component materials. Uh, talk about amorphous or glassy sort of products. Again, amorphous alloys contain atoms of significantly different sizes, leading to low free volume in molten state. Viscosity prevents each atoms from moving enough to form an ordered lattice. Material structure also, uh, also results in low shrinkage during cooling. Now, the, the bottom sentence there, the absence of grain boundaries, is where we understand the benefit to come from. If you look at something like a, uh, a chromium carbide deposit, you'll find this these lovely long thick chromium carbide dendrites which represent lots and lots and lots of grain boundaries and this is where in an impact situation is where these deposits fail because they'll crack on those grain boundaries. Where we have the amorphous alloys and microcomposite alloys we don't have those grain boundaries. So amorphous metal while technically glasses are also much tougher and less brittle. Um, Okay, that talks on that slide about the, the fact that the uh, spot 60 is basically the, the, the bee's knees, I suppose. But we need to look at what the spot X products, and we're talking about spot 94X and spot 96X. The design process of spot X deposits involved a proprietary high throughput computational metallurgical process to evaluate millions of candidates of alloy compositions. Potential candidates are evaluated using advanced screening processes allowing for thorough and rapid development. And that was our part. We, they, they came up with these products, we, they came to us, and we started to develop them. So, Spot X deposits uniquely paired toughness for high impact applications with high wear resistance to rival the best coatings available. Uh, it achieves these typical discordant properties by forming a high volume fraction of tough laminar complex borides while avoiding long needle like particles. This is what I was saying about the chromium carbide. That's a standard chromium carbide. Uh, is 2576 grade two, uh, 2560, so it's a mutton seed chrome carbide, minimum 60 rock per seed. But you can see from there that the, uh, the carbide dendrites are potentially quite long, and that represents lots and lots and lots of grain boundaries. So, chrome and carbide coatings involve depositing many separate materials simultaneously. This results in poor performance due to undesirable settling and dissolution during welding. Contrast spot X is deposited as a single alloy with carbides and borides, thermodynamically driven to precipitate and want you to sleep throughout the world deposit. So the fine scale microstructure chromium carbide coatings contain carbide particles of the order of 50 to 250 microns in size. In contrast, the carbides and borides of spot X range from 1 to 10 microns. Computational metallurgy allows the design of these phases to grow from liquid a small and consistent size, size and shape and distribution. Fine scale microstructure has many beneficial effects such as preventing small abrasive or erosive particles from attacking the matrix. However, the most important benefit of the spot X microstructure is it means to withstand impact and high stress. Now, I've got a little slide here that wouldn't play last time, but it gives you, I think I've worked out how to make it work. <coughs> and that is this one. Oh, 
but soon enough of that, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's a hammer Tesla that was developed by the guys of Scoperto, and that is impacting uh, 20 joules of impact. Now, I've got some numbers for you here, which are going to be quite interesting. Okay, we, we tried a number of samples, so there was a dual plate sample, there was our spot 60, spot X samples, spot 60 samples, and another complex carbon. Uh, these are the number of impacts to failure. Watch these numbers. Okay, so 698, 1225, 713. This is the result. So on the left, you've got before. <coughs> on the right, you have the other. This is the, the, the before failure and after failure. Okay, now this is our X numbers. Do you know why there is an asterisk next to that? No, I'll tell you. They stopped the test because nothing was happening. <laughs> This, the spot 96 was the one that was done after this, and they said, well, look, there's still nothing happened, so they stopped. That's the result. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> now, uh, this one here is CNO, which is a, a woolly alloy CNO, which is a, a complex chrome carbide, chrome niobium. Uh, have a look at the numbers on that one. Now, this is a product that is sometimes used for impact resistance. Do you want to see all those photos again? <laughs> what, what we're seeing here is something that is phenomenally impact. It's insanely impact resistant. Okay, so originally spot X was limited to a maximum deposit of eight millimeters. The reason for that is this is so damn difficult to deposit. You get one hit at it. You apply it to a plate or whatever you're applying it to. If something goes wrong, you basically throw them down and make another one. It can't be welded over, it can't be repaired it goes down. So you can understand that a lot of development went into trying to find the best way to deposit this, to, to manufacture the plates or whatever it is. Uh, and we achieved eight millimetres in one pass. But there's still people that wanted more than that. So at the moment we're fine-tuning a way to, to deposit at 12 millimetres in one pass, which is pretty bloody thick. We've got there, we've done it, we can do it. It's a little more problematic than eight millimeters because when things go wrong, you're losing one and a half times as much. So, but we're getting there. The 12 millimeters deposit is, is where we're, we're at. Okay, so the range of products here. If you look at this chart on the right hand side, you can see that the, the one in black is a standard chrome carbide. Uh, a, D, and E are the final products. G is our spot 60. The other uh, additions here, which is the B and the C and the F, they were the forerunners. So, just, I've left those in there to show you. Okay, we started off with some of these. Uh, the B and C products and the F products, and through the work that we've done, we've got them to improve and make them that little bit better. Uh, so, uh, Spot 94 is a chromium free heat treatable alloy. You can put it onto GET and then reheat treat them. Reheat treat, you know? Yeah, reheat treat. So that what you lose in the welding process on a, a lovely manganese tooth, you can re inject through a heat treatment process. And that's really good. Uh, the the fact that it's chromium free makes it not necessarily too corrosion resistant. So uh, look at this in terms of the wear resistance, the high density of complex borides and vanadium carbides in the bar to matrix that to compete with the wear performance of tons of carbide nickel overlays at a lower price point. Yes, it does, but not for every application. I mean, the tons of carbide is, is, is still the benchmark for abrasion resistance, but it's not for the impact resistance. So there's, there's a trade off there. Um, so this is spot 94x micro against the, the one on the right of course is the spot 60 which is our tons of carbon, the spot 60 standard product. So you can see that there's a lot of matrix exposed, as you get pointed there. But there's a lot of matrix areas exposed in this one and of course that means it's not wonderful for erosion. Um, and what you see on this one is there's basically no matrix, it's a one Okay, spot 96, this is the one that does contain some chromium, so it is a little corrosion resistant as well. And where we've seen this one in wet shoes and so on, it, it made a massive difference. So spot 96 is an iron base that <coughs> contains some chromium uh, to provide a degree of corrosion resistance in addition to its impact and abrasion resistance. So uh, hard cubic complex molybdenum borer particles are much be distributed throughout the entire world deposit our spot 96X to compete with the wear performance of nickel and chrome, and nickel, and the polyborides, 
uh, particles harder and smaller than tons of carbon phase PTA overlay deposits, which is a characteristic that enhances its impact resistance. We're seeing in a lot of instances the 96 as well is perhaps slightly more impact resistant. Not every application is slightly more. So again, there's two micros, again, the same, uh, this is spot 60, bringing it back to spot 60 because that's sort of the, the benchmark, I suppose. Okay, so what 97X is a different animal. That's an amorphous alloy. Uh, that is not one that has been produced by Scoperta and developed by us. It was a product that was developed by the nanosteel company over in the States many, many years ago. And it originally was produced as <coughs> armor plating for military vessels, vehicles, and security companies, and so on. But so somebody in their brain thought, well, if it can withstand bullets, it can withstand rocks. <laughs> and we've gone from there. That, again, has its issues about being deposited. But, again, it's something that's a lot more expensive. It's great. We prefer to work with a spot 94X to 96X because we have the equity in that one. So, this is a multi composite steel alloy with unique glass forming amorphous bell chemistry. Again, with the micros. Okay, now looking onto a case study, uh, the spot 60 overlay, this was, let me see this one. This is a 20 alloy carbide overlay plate. This, I think, was uh, compared with a plate that was supplied by a company who manufactures wear plate in Perth. I won't mention their name because the case study doesn't suggest that um, their plate was better than ours. And uh, there was a significant improvement Using that one, that was a mine here in Western Australia. Uh, this this is a gold mine. I think this is a Boddington gold mine. Uh, their target was 16 million tons, and the previous plate was was uh, achieving 3.4 million tons, and the spot 60 brought about to 15 million tons. And that's with uh, that thickness. Uh, this is not spot 94x or 96x. This is a spot 60. Uh, this was one. That was in the States, I believe, grain engagement to all drugs at a 72% increase in lifetime of the tooth. And the one at the bottom was a spot 94, uh, two to three times increase in lifetime. So now that's a GT. <clears throat> and the secondary crush of teeth, 35% increase in spot 94X. And down the bottom, you've got a crusher roller there, which saw. So this one, 0.217 tons of carbon overlay, had a wear of 0.23. This one is over in the States, at no, City Pacific Mine, uh, 20 to 100% increase in lifetime, I suppose, it depends on where it goes. And we've used a spot 94 on the blades, as you can see on this one, the blades through here, and also on the, no, that's the blades on this one, and that worked really, really well. And that's about it. And I think I'm out of time. Yeah, that's about <coughs> right. time to stop, mate. About time to stop. All right. Any quick questions for Trevor? Kathy? Trevor, um, do you play it after you roll the plate if you need to roll it? Or no, is it can be roll? rolled. No, no. Look, when, when Paul said you've already got 70 minutes, I uh, took out some of the slides and, and those dealt with the workability of the plate. Mm -hmm. But yes, it can be rolled and pressed. Yep. Um, it seems to be quite happy for an 8 millimetre deposit to roll up to about 500 mil by this one. So, yes. So, once the gap's haven't done any tests on it, we haven't wrapped it around anything. Uh, all we are working at the moment is, is putting on GTs and making flat wear plate. As Captain said, we have tried rolling it. We have rolled it in the bucks. We can, with an 8mm deposit, we can roll it into about a 500mm pipe on the inside. On the outside, of course, you will get a <coughs> crack up. Interesting, we might have to do some tests and see if we can measure it. With your 12 millimeter deposits, are you finding issues with the leak checking? Because it's the other thing I've made that you know, it's even better as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this goes down to the one that's been molded for about 100 millimeters, or 70 volts, about 100 millimeters. You put it down to a weak pattern. Yes, that's right. 
that next slide. That's a, that's a great result. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much.